Desert Island Discs. Welcome to your favorite personality profile program where we bring to you life stories of incredible folks that have distinguished themselves. Tonight on the program, I have the privilege of having an incredible lady. A lady who has been or is regarded, and rightly so, as an icon in the women's movement in the country. You are revered as one of the first women member of parliament. You are part of the team that you know, wrote our constitution, but you also come from a rich heritage where your own father was a prime minister in the Buganda Kingdom, the daughter of Martin Luther and Sibirwa. I have the privilege of hosting you, Mama Roda Kalima. Welcome to the program. Thank you. For the incredible life that Honorable Roda Kalima has lived and the state of our advanced age, we find it as a program tonight not to take a music break, but allow her to share with us her life story uninterrupted. I hope you bear with us. But she also requested that she doesn't have the voice to sing and so won't be sharing with us her music choice. What a life well lived, what a legacy, and what a privilege to have in our midst. Tell us about yourself, your upbringing from the cradle when it all began. Wow, but it's a long life. It is. We won't have the time to, to say everything. <laughs> we'll try <laughs> oh, to no. the best of your recollection. Anyway, I was born on the 10th of May, 1929, at Mengo Hospital, to my father, who had just become Katikiro of Uganda five, five, five weeks before. Wow. And I was born at Mengo Hospital. Your house is more like, you know, the, literally, the writing is on the wall. Great history and great moments. And great what? And great moments. But bring us to the childhood of you being a daughter of a Katikiro. Just take us into the homestead of Katikiro in Sibirwa. Well, first of all, I can tell you that it was a large home. It was a large home with many with a, a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of people, my father had several wives. Had his 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 wife, his original wife, and then he had four others. And so, as a, as a result, we were many children. But my father, as I look back, was a great administrator. He brought us. He, he saw that we are all brought up as one one family as a family of one mother. Wow. Yet, his other wives were very respectful to the senior wife, and they were very friendly. And we, our children, were brought up like as if we had several mothers equally in every way. When I look back, I see, and compared with today, I'm, I'm, I wonder. There was never fights, and there was always harmony and love. And you mentioned about this particular business, status rather. Our father made it clear that we are Martin Luther, since we were children, not particular children. He would make us recite it whenever we came home for holidays. What you, are not, you are not Katikiro's children. Mm -hmm. You are Martin, he, he used to call himself Martin. You are Martin's children. You understand? See, that we understand. You are not particular student. He, he, he emphasized this to us, and I, we grew up as knowing we were his children, not particular student. Why did he look that direction? Was he that modest, or he didn't want you to grow heirs larger than life? He, he must have realized that there must be some heirs to come up, but he was so conscious about humility. He was very, very conscious to see that we, are, we grew up as humble children. And I think he succeeded. No, the writing is on the <laughs> wall. <laughs> At the time you were born, in the 20s, in the early uh, 20th century, your counterparts, girls, 
never had an equal opportunity like their male counterparts to an education. What made your father, in your view now, with the benefit of hindsight, subject you to the same opportunity to an education like your brothers? Like? Your brothers. My brothers? Yes. Well, it's a long story, but it's history. People just need to read history. Mm -hmm. That when the missionaries came here, by 1900s, they had started schools. The Church Missionary Society had started a school at Gaza High School in 1905, then King's College in 1906. But even the Roman Catholic Church mission mm -hmm. had started, I, 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 I need to, to be quite clear, but in Namiriango, I think is the first Roman Catholic school. So, with the Gaia's High School started, and the missionaries emphasized <coughs> wherever there was a school, there should be a hospital, there should be, wherever there was a church, there should be a hospital, there should be a church, there should be a school. A, a school. And Saporo uh, Kagwa, the famous uh, catechist for 27 years, who preceded, not really exactly, not immediately, because after Saporo Kagwa died or retired, and, uh, retired when he was getting really sick and weak, and Chosong Kole, the Tepre Chosong Kole, became, uh, uh, became catechist after him for two years. He also, for reasons, maybe health or what, but he, 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 he retired also and after two years. Then my, my father came in. But by then, Sapro Kagwa had built up a lot of, of the Uganda, Buganda with many chiefs. And so, and he had been to, to Britain. He had known the British, most likely he had known the British so well and worked with, with them. Uh -huh. And he, they, he started among the chiefs. He, he persuaded many chiefs. He took his own daughter, children, his daughters to Gayaza and, and other relati related people, related chiefs, to, to start to take their children to Gaza High School. And at the same time, a year later, it's a long story about how Budwe also started. A year later, uh, then Buddha also opened the school for bo for boys. The girls went to were admitted in Buddha in 1933, and by canonic grace. So so chief it must mean started chiefs, but not which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. All the chiefs, all the chiefs around around Uganda started to send their daughters. To Buddha and Gayaza. Wow. From Ankole, from Busoga. Uh, I remember from Ankole and Busoga and Bunyoro. One of the girls, one of the girls, the photograph I think is there, one of the first few girls in 19, 1993, was from Hoima. And uh, so, my father was attracted, although he never went to school himself. Wherever there was education, he was all, he was just mad, 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 just so obsessed with education. So he also followed to take the two girls. The older girls were already in Gayaza, and he decided to take his two daughters who had been to Gayaza one, one year to go to Budo. And that's how Sarah, my my sister, who was older than me, and me, were transferred from Gaza to Budo, to P2, P1 in Gaza and P2 at Budo. Then we were, we were, we were there at Budo. And the journey of 11 years at Budo started yes. for you? Yes, I, I was there for 11 years, for up to P6, and then J1, J2, J3, and then S4, S5, S6. That's how that the stages were set, where um, made that way. But unfortunately, my sister Sarah is older, was older than me, but after, after a year, a year, died of uh, thunder lightning at Bodo when, when she was about to be 11. Oh, 
that must have been indeed yes. a very heavy strike on the family. But as you went through the motions at Budo, did you have a vocation in mind of what you wanted to be? During primary, not really. Mm -hmm. Not many children, not maybe now a child of P5 may admire a pilot, a, a, a doctor. A, 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 to be a pilot or to be a doctor, uh, but not, not during the primary. Not even during the junior, the stages were primary one to primary six. In fact, when, we were, when I was in primary six, my year of 1941, primary six, was the first year inter uh, nationally when the P6 became national, the, the, the current P7. Oh. Then it was P6 and started in that year uh, of 1941. After that, the first stages will be J junior one, J junior two, junior three. It was during junior three when, because I didn't like sciences, I was f f frightened of them. Mm -hmm. Algebra, uh, particularly chemistry and physics. So I said, going yeah, at Bodo where I was, there were two streams after J3. You could go to straight to academic, which will lead you to Makere College, it was college then, Makere mm -hmm. College, or it will lead you to a commercial course. So I decided to go to a commercial course. I was attracted by going to a commercial course where I would learn typing, uh -huh. mainly typing. And then I discovered that I was doing bookkeeping, office routine, typing, commerce. I was attracted by the typing, by typing on the typewriter. That was more like having... Th that is, a, that is the, that is the, 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 computer, the computer of today. <laughs> yes. So you were one of the most sophisticated young people at the time. Yes. In fact, I can say this. Because I think a commercial course was also in Kibsuvi. And one, one I think, and may possibly in Miyamiyango, I can be corrected, but and Budo. Yet, there was no girl who had done a commercial course before me. Wow. Which means, that I used to say, the first girl to touch a typewriter in Uganda. Wow. <laughs> because the rest were uh, Asian or Britain, Asia, a few Asian, uh, by then, most likely British secretaries from the colonial government, mind you, it was colonial oh. government. So there was no African girl who would go to the governors or provincial, provincial uh, assistant district commissioners. So I, I, I was the first girl in Uganda to touch a typewriter. We need the, to preserve the, your the, fingers the computer there. Of today. Pardon? We need to preserve your fingers for heritage, because being the first set of fingers of a Ugandan native girl to touch a typewriter, that's something of epic proportions. And my, my father was happy about it. Mm -hmm. He had mastered when, when he wrote to, to admit me into the commercial course. He said, if I, your daughter Rhoda would be uh, accepted in S commercial course S4, if you allow, if you allow her to do to, but he was also cautious because it was not uh, the, all the students before me were boys. And my father was just happy. He said, oh, she'll be able to type letters like boys, like men. Wow. She'll, go, she'll be able to work in the office, to work the letters like men. She was very, very, uh, he didn't, he, he wasn't very forward going. Hmm. He was very progressive in his mind for education. Sure. There's something I would want us to know, especially with regard to how you are able to fluently speak impeccable English by your European and Asian teachers and yet remained grounded and able to speak your local dialect, Luganda, and attest to the culture therein. The two seem to be worlds apart. How are you able to manifest both worlds in one body? It's not only me. I think all my 
If all my comrades sometimes feel very, very homesick when I think about them, many of them, my friends. Um, my friends, there's a photograph there of my, of my friends whom I was with. If they were, were alive and were working, they would be able to, to manage both in Uganda and English together with the experience they would have been through. Mm. Yes. So, I have not been, st I'm not sat still. I've not been, been able to sit still. Let me say that. Wow, incredible. So from King's College Budo, where did your journey of education take you? From King's College Budo, I was appointed the bus and secretary of Gaza High School, wow. where I had started earlier. So I was pleased to go back to the same school. I was, I was, I was, uh, the headmistress there, I said, Kobe. She was just happy to have me because she had seen a lot of my sisters. I can't remember whether when I was a, whether I was a student in P1, whether she was still, whether she was still the headmistress, possibly not. But she has used my family. My sisters had been there. One of my sisters, Mrs. Janet Mudo, a photograph there, uh -huh. you know, a known teacher, she had been from there, and again she had pictures there. She's been there and went to Buloba to, to as a teacher train, in a teacher training school, and it trained as a teacher. So she was happy. I can't remember, I can't recall how it all came out, but she she must have had an, been an influence because she really, very much wanted me to take to to take teaching. Wow. To take teaching, uh, well, uh, and uh, so I was able to to be to be to be employed as a secretary and the bus of Gaza High School. Wow! But that also came after the very unfortunate death of your father. Came after what? The unfortunate death of your father. That's right. <clears throat> My father died in nineteen forty-five. And that was, you know, you were... 1945, when I had just started uh, my S4 course. It is difficult to, 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 to take you back how it all happened, but I put it in my book, how we are helped, my sisters and my brothers who were, school, who were still schooling. It was a, a, a marvelous, it's a miracle in a way. But God used, used many people to see that we all finish school. Wow. You may want, and sorry if I'm bringing sadness back to your life, but just to speak about that day, because he died suddenly. That day, I was only 16. I can recall very little of it. Well, not very, because it's very, very sad and very dramatic. Mm. He shook, shook the car, not only me, took the country. Mm -hmm. The first time to a, a gunshot to kill someone, and that someone, not my father, but a Katikiro, it was, uh, and, and, that, and uh, shooting him at the church, at the entrance of the church. The church. It was very dramatic. So, the rest is, uh, the rest is history, but it was really dramatic, very sad. Coming down to how then you go through that, and like you said, use your words, God used many people mm -hmm. to ensure that you go through That school, will complete school. That you complete school. Mm -hmm. When you began to work as a secretary and a bursar at Gaza High School, were you also able, did you have other family responsibilities that then Part of your salary would go to sort out? Or now were you able just to fend for yourself and stand on your own? No, I, I, I can't remember whether I did that. I think my older brothers still continued to assist. Mm. And my sister, uh, that one, Janet Mdori, I think they sit, and actually there were other uh, guardians who are related to our father who helped. In the, during that situation of the sudden death. So 
they must have helped with that. So, Gaya's High School, how long were you there as secretary and boss? Gaya's High School? Mm -hmm. uh, for two years. And after? After that, I got married. All right. So, meeting your dear husband. Pardon? Meeting your dear husband, William Kalima Senior. Where you, did I meet him? You, yeah, you mind sharing with us the story of how you met? He came to, he, went, he also went to Budo mm -hmm. and joined S4 from Okono Bishop School, primary school. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was in S1. I was in J1 when he was in S4. And so I think during, possibly during the second, during when I was in J2, he, he, he liked to, to, to love me, but I didn't mind much about him. We were too young. Incidentally, there wasn't very much um, girl, girl, boy, girl relationships, but the natural, natural instinct of, of boys approaching girls mm. was in him to approach me. <laughs> uh, so he must have been encouraged by two of my brothers. But I didn't care much much about him. Mm -hmm. I thought he was even too old. I didn't care much about him. I was more concerned about my studies. And we had a very friendly uh, sisterhood uh, life in, at, at the girl's end. Mm -hmm. So not many of us were really, were really committed to the boys. And many boys must have been uh, taken off. No, it wasn't very much of that. But I think he's continued to like me. And after three years, he left school. When I, by the time I entered S4, by, entered, by the time uh, I, 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 I finished S, J3, mm -hmm. he was also finishing S6. It was in, called S6. And he went to Makere College, studied as a teacher. Wow. And while I was completing my 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 course, my course at Buddha. Then in 1949, he must have wanted to approach me again. And so he tried to come to Gayaza. Mm -hmm. He came to Gayaza to visit me. Mm -hmm. And one of his friends was also a teacher. And he proposed to me. And by that. then, the rest is history. <laughs> as they say. As they say. Lived happily ever after until... Mm, we were married in, in early, early 1950. Wow. Mm. And then you did you continue to work while married? No. Or did you take a sabbatical? He, I, I did, he was teaching... When he left Makere College as a teacher, he went to teach at Budo. So I, I, automatically I moved to... To Budo. To Budo. And I was there with him. And after how long did you then uh, find yourself back to work? Back to work. Oh, back to school. I mean, what was life like? Back to studies. Mm -hmm. We call it back to studies, maybe. Because mm -hmm. after we're married, don't go, don't go back to school. But it happened. It's a long story. It happened that during that time, Makere was Makere College. And there's a long story about that mm. until it came, became Makere University, where my father was involved and where actually is, uh, is, is, where he was involved in seeing that Makere expands into a university, not a college. Mm. So the, the protected government wanted most, a lot of, realized that Uganda needed graduates, didn't have graduates. A few graduates had been to South Africa, like Yusu, Wajilu, and uh, and uh, Apolo Kironde, who was a grandson of Sapro Kagwa. They had been to South Africa, and some had been to India. But there was no graduate whom the British government realized would be able not enough that we'll be able to, to progress the country. And uh, the governor and his team decided to send a lot of students to Britain. 
Wow. For, to, for, for, for degree courses, higher studies and degree courses. Mm -hmm. Nakiri had only four courses, teaching, medicine, veterinary, and agriculture. So many, uh, so I, I can't tell you the names, but I know many were sent to Britain to study for a degree. And that is, as it happened, William who was also very eager to improve himself. They possibly they asked, they asked them to apply, and the, it was called uh, the Department of Education. But although it was a department, not a mystery, it worked very much to, to expand and increase education programs. Mm -hmm. We were very concerned that we get, the country gets more, gets enough gradually it, that the country produces graduates. So they would go to Britain and do graduate courses. Many, I cannot tell you, for me I knew them, and of them, many of them have passed on. But there was also, they also said, if a student stays there for more than two years, mm -hmm. his wife can follow him at government expense. Ah, oh, okay. Yes, at government expenses. That's how I got the opportunity and to go. left my, our young children with my family. Mm -hmm. And then I, I joined him in Edinburgh University. And if they can study any course there, they could stay there for longer, or one year or two. If they have, they have, they have a course they can study. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I was, uh, it was organized for me to study social studies. And finally, in a first I at a college, an old adult education college. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I was recommended to do a social studies course a certificate, not a degree. Uh, I didn't. I, I would need four years, not only anyway. two. Yeah. So I was recommended to take, which was there already, certificate course at the university. Uh, so I moved with many of those whom I whom I was with at the at the Edim, at the New Butler College, mm -hmm. and that's how William was completing. as in his final year, and I was in my first. But he, he said, it's better, you can complete your course. So I did a social studies course, which, will, uh, which, led, to, which led to a social study, a, a, a social worker, professional social worker. So when I came back here, I was employed in community development department, a ministry, Ministry of Community Development. Wow. So it seemed like I changed from from, from being a type. Uh, like, uh, but That's my secretary. skills, I still kept my skills. <laughs> That's why you can see so many Money files. All that. The many files in the records. It is a, it trained me into records. It trained me into that is the value. I that's something I value most. You can see those photographs of a P six. It, it trained one to keep records. Yes. I have the letters of, I have my certificates of 1958. Wow. I have my certificate of 1947 when I was living in Buddha. And certificates of 1958 when I was living in Edinburgh. I have that's, it. That's incredible. I have them. So when you return, you find, how do you find your children? Had they been socialized well, the bonding came almost naturally. And when you, when you returned from the UK with yes. your dear husband, so they knew... He had come before me. He had come earlier. Earlier and wow. kept our children. Ah, okay. That means also that uh, then the bonding was almost made a lot easier because you found them already with the daddy. How many of these did you have at the moment, at that time? How many what? Of children did you have at that time? And we had three. Huh. We had three. So working in the... And they were already, the two older ones were already at King's College in Bodo. As Bodo, well, the Bodo Primary moved later in 1958 to Kabinja. Some people know Kabinja. Kabinja is the junior school, but the original, even the uniform, 
Yes, it's very uniform. You see, if you have seen a, a Budo, a Kabinja student, boy or girl, they are wearing those two uniforms you see in that picture. We are red. <laughs> with a quite with a square neck, they were red. Wow. So it moved the school. They, uh, they wanted to expand the secondary, and they want to, to expand the primary. Long after I had left school, and my son William was among those who moved, who were first moved to from the, to, the bottom school, from the top school, to Kavinja. But they, somehow they remained to be same schools. Budo Junior School, and uh, the same uniform, yes, same uniform. They, that was there originally in nineteen, in the nineteen twenties, nineteen so nineteen hundred, yeah, nineteen possibly nineteen twenties. The boys and nineteen, the girls, it is the same uniform. So there are two schools in one, one school in two, rather whatever, one school in two. The journey of work at the ministry, or should we call it the department? Ministry in, 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 in Uganda. In Uganda. Yeah. When I came back, I was uh, admitted in the, in the Ministry of Culture and Community Development. It was called Culture and Community, Culture and Community Development. A, a, a ministry. And probation, it had a, a branch of probation office. And I was, in the, I was employed in the probation office. Finally, later on, I was in charge, where I inherited the English, English staff, who were heading the probation office. Mm -hmm. My training made me, helped me in, in Britain. The social work course was very intensive, very intensive. So it helped me to, to manage, to manage, to take care of social problems of uh, street children, kind of, which now, now is that in school children, mm. and all social problems. So, and the economy, yeah. So oh. I, was in, I was employed there, it's in the Ministry of Community Development. From 1915, end of 58, end of, beginning of 59, 58, until 1966, when uh, I, I was, I, I, I got some uh, health problems which were not, which were not ending. Oh. I decided to, to, to retire and take care of our children who had increased to a big number, <laughs> to a bigger number of five instead of three. instead of the three we left. Yes. That must have been a very... I became a wife and a mother. That must have been a very hard decision to take, to just become a wife and a mother when you're used to working and earning. What was that experience like for you? Mm, it was Church. necessary because among in, in uh, during my studies, child 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 development was very very was very important. Prime was prime to know the child can, cannot. I could not. It, it wasn't. But I wasn't feeling well enough. Mm. And my husband was very very busy. Was already in the new in the government after independence of 1962. First of all, he became. Today is what they call Minister of State, but they used to call the Parliamentary Secretary during that time, or Deputy Minister of oh. Education. Oh! Mm, was Deputy Minister of Education. Tremendous. And so busy. They went to Karamoja with his minister. I have photographs there where they, they traveled to Karamoja with his minister. Uh, they went, uh, and uh, so it was just right. It wasn't hard. It was just right to to take care of the family. Wow. That's the sacrifice we're talking about. And many years down the road, like they say. Pardon? And many years down the road, we see you getting very active in not just 
the women's movement, but we see you get active in politics and we see you get active in community development, especially in your home in Chiboga. What was the transition like from housewife to all these many things that you eventually become later on? To be involved in community development in Chiboga. And everything that you, you began to do away from just raising your children. What was the transition point? It was normal. It was smooth and normal. Just wished to, 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 to be active, helping other people, helping what is right. It's difficult to explain to you, but I felt it was just the right thing to, for instance, oh. there was a, a Mr. And Mr. Anwa, he was in, formerly in police, and he was the, the president of the uh, Men's Hawk Association. One day he approached me and said to me, you may have seen a picture somewhere in a book, that since can you help to be president of the, of the Women's Hawk Association? Mm -hmm. And I thought it was, let me do, let me try. I, we had played hockey at Budo. Budo was, there was hockey, there was tennis, there was football for the boys. But hockey, even girls could do hockey. And then for girls, there were netball and grounders. So games was so common. I said, okay, okay, I'll try, please. He, in fact, he begged me. Uh. Please. I said, okay. So that, uh, that was occupied me. Voluntarily, there are some girls at Makere College School and Namagunga, mainly Makere College School and Namagunga, St. Mary's in Namagunga, and uh, many others were Goan girls. Goan. Goan, yes. Uh, who, who, who were some secretaries, some are doing other things here. We had a Goan community. Uh, be a going community and Asian community before I mean chase them away. That occupied me. And then when William decided, he said, let us build a home in Kyoga. That also became part of my occupation. And I enjoyed it. And you gave him the full support. I enjoyed it because that's where he's born. And I enjoyed the uh enjoyed the love of his family. And the children were growing up. And I were growing up, completing their their different stages. I had a lot to do for my family. But eventually the country then gets to feel your contribution. Pardon? You, it, what started off like a contribution to your family yes. eventually spirals out into the wider community. Mm. Please walk us through that journey. When I came back from Britain, I found a women's Uganda, women, Uganda Council of Women already, already working, mm -hmm. already established. It was established in 1946. And somehow, I probably to remember, uh, Mrs. Brown, Winifred Brown, the trained doctor, your medical doctor, the wife of, uh, of his, uh, of the Bishop of, U of Bishop of Uganda, of Uganda, and finally, later on became Bishop of Uganda. Uh -huh. Somehow she, in fact, it's her who, who she, we had met before as I was, uh, as I stayed here with, uh, with my children. And she, she asked me to, to, when I came back, she asked me to be part of the, they had already, Uganda Council of Women had already started the, Afghan Council of Women had already started the 
Uganda uh, status of women com subcommittee of the of the of the status of, of the Uganda Commercial of Uganda Council of Women, and that was looking for the that subcommittee was working for the status of women, uh -huh. and that status of women committee was working for mainly. It's such a long story. And it was a subcommittee with a few people, and she asked me to be the secretary of that committee. Wow. And I agreed. Well, my children were still very young. And we still, still needed me. Well, we had, by the time actually I started, we still had three children, only three children. And then I became secretary. When I became secretary, it I started to to like to like the idea of improving mm -hmm. women's status, social justice. Social justice mainly was what was driving us. And the important thing there was the status of women was concerned about registration of all marriages. Mm -hmm. Registration of all marriages. I can see you have a, a ring there. Yes. <laughs> I believe your wife is very, very secure. Very, very happy and secure. So we said registration of marriages should take place. That was what we were concerned about. Whether whether you call it whether in the church or at the district or at Gombolora. Don't you expect all women to come to, all their way to come to, to go to, to, to the churches. But if that would be the ideal, but let everybody let all marriages be registered. Basically I was more concerned about that. And that would sort out all social problems. I still believe it today. It will sort out all problems. When marriages are registered. Not with big weddings or big kwanjula. No. But with, with a record. Where the man says, you are my wife. And the wife said, you are my, my husband. husband. And you can say, she's my wife, you can't touch her. He's my husband, you can't touch her. As time progressed, as time progressed, this is, the situation has changed so much. The social life, social behavior has changed. But although, as I told you about my background, my father had several wives, but at the same time, he was so concerned about his daughters getting married in church. No, <laughs> no. His daughters. Oh, he didn't. He didn't like any of his of his daughters to be married without church, because he gradually became a deep Christian. Christian. Wow. But at the same time, he couldn't chase his wife away. Yes. He did not believe in that. He thought it was not right. It was not right. It was not good for his children, and he did not was not good. It was not fair. So he didn't throw, throw them away at all. But for as a, as a forward-looking, for, for the future, all his daughters uh -huh. were to be, by the time he died, four of his, three of his daughters had been married, and were married in church. And those who, who ran away, one or two, whatever, if one was, had wanted to run away, and those, even those who, were, who, who became widowed, they were they knew your cafe was your husband. So, so that is uh, that is how I came to to be, and from there it's a long journey. From there, uh, the women movement grew, grew and grew and grew. But that was basic because uh, to, to to improve the justice, social justice, and happiness and peace. Not for only for women, but for the family, for the children. True. Mm. For an incredible conversation such as this, with such a rich life story, time is never an ally on our side. And as such, we'll now pass it on to the next week, where we'll be more than glad to hear the continuation of Rhoda Kalima's life story. Bear with us, but tune in. God bless. Desert Island Discs.
it was first time to a, a gunshot to kill someone and that someone not my father but a katikiro it was uh, and and, that, and uh, shooting him at the church at the entrance of the church it was all very dramatic so the rest is uh, the rest is history but it was really dramatic very sad Desert Island Discs 